What's up everybody, it's John from Optech coming at you today with an amazing $1,300 workstation gaming PC build. First, I wanna break down the component selection and the pricing for each of these parts. All right guys, let's get into this. And you can visit kit.com slash all of tech to view this entire PC build, the components, further detail, pricing, and information. And also discover, discuss, share, and group your interest into your very own kit at kit.com today. Link in the description box down below. Up first for the processor from AMD, the Ryzen 5 1600X, six core, 12 thread with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz turbo up to four gigahertz. And this sets you back, oh my goodness, MSRP of just $249. The perfect choice for a workstation and gaming system since you will get incredible price performance for video encoding, content creation, gaming, streaming, encryption, and still enjoy that incredible gaming experience. And for the motherboard, this one from Asus, the B350 Plus Prime, a mainstream motherboard on the AM4 platform. And the B B350 chipset is really quite similar to the Enthusiast X370 chipset, being that they both support overclocking. The best news is that this motherboard sets you back just $100, and this one also has an NVMe M.2 slot and those RGB headers. Which brings us to the cooler for this build. So the Ryzen 5 1600X does not include a stock cooler, although AMD sent out the Wraith Max with the review kit. So this is really similar to the original Wraith cooler, so it has great cooling performance, but a really welcome addition to the Wraith Max is it has that RGB lighting, that RGB ring around the fan on the top. So it's just gonna look so cool in this team red build. And for the graphics card, you know I had to bust out the Red Dragon. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 1070, eight gigabyte graphics card. This is blazing fast, ready to take on 4K gaming, 1440p gaming, 1080p gaming. You wanna turn GPU acceleration on in something like Adobe Premiere. If you're a video editor, this is perfect for a workstation as well, because this is gonna give you fast render times. Has a large copper base plate. Look at those. And the sweet kitten, this is Little Ah. He has not come included in the build but he loves building PC. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up for a little uh, napping in the sun on top of the PC case. Eight millimeter copper heat pipes, a beautiful back plate, even a dragon etched in it. And now let's move it on along to random access memory for $140, two eight gigabyte sticks of Corsair Vengeance with red LEDs, perfect for a team red build and with advertised cast latency of 16. And for storage, I went with a solid state drive, yielding incredibly fast OS boot times, loading applications so quickly, actually around 20 times faster than the traditional mechanical hard drive. And this has really efficient and low power consumptions. And now for the power supply, it's really important that we have really efficient clean power to the build. So we went with one with a very high reputation. This is the EVGA Supernova 750 watt G3 gold certified. So with an 80 plus gold certification, you will be getting over 91% efficiency under typical load. Really like that it's fully modular, so you can decide what cables you want, what cables you don't want, and you can't forget that this also has a 10 year unparalleled customer support and warranty, 10 year warranty from EVGA. And moving it on now to the case, this was sent out by Bit Phoenix. This is the flagship super mid tower case, the Shogun. And if the cat approves, you know it's legit. So this is the perfect combination of aluminum, steel, and also has two large tempered glass side panels. And a lot of modularity to the design, so I can't wait to show you guys this awesome case and also building it. Super mid tower case, We've got the glass panel on both sides. Very well packaged. Little uh, thumb screws have a little indention there. It's a really nice touch. And on the other side, another tempered glass side panel. So this is actually completely tinted out, completely black, which I think is really cool because you get the cool look of the tempered glass. Although at the same time, you get to hide your cables in the back. So really good job, really nice choice. A design choice. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is just this matte aluminum, really cold to touch. This is like super premium. I like seeing this. Bit Phoenix is right on the money with this case. We have uh, extra cable routing grommets. I see it came with the case. Haven't even opened this up yet. So guys, here's the star of the show. The Ryzen 5 1600X, six core, 12 thread processor. So I'm just gonna grab it by the edges. Don't wanna touch any of those pins. And I'm gonna line the arrows up with the arrow on the motherboard. Lift the retention lever up. So we'll try to do that now. Ooh, there we go. And it locks into place. Now we're gonna install the AMD Wraith Max cooler. And now for the second little mounting bracket, just gonna line up the screws with the corresponding holes that are coming from the back plate. 
and this will keep these brackets really securely in place for that Wraith Max cooler to go over. And if you have any other cooler that has that same latching mechanism, it should work just fine with these included AM4 brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some Arctic Silver 5 and apply a pea size in the center of the Ryzen 5 6600X. And then I'm going to install the Wraith Max cooler. So let's do that now. Like I was saying, there's that latch right there. That's gonna go over when you have the lever in this position and you wanna lock it into place once you have it over one of those um, indentions in the mounting brackets, this will lock it into place. And now you just move the retention lever to the left and this will very securely lock the Wraith Max Cooler into place. And here we have the fan header. So we're gonna give power to that fan up here at the top. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And this is key. And the Wraith Max will not be complete without the RGB lighting. Here is this fan RGB header. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this. We're gonna have the arrow align where it says plus 12 volt. And it goes in the corresponding correction. And this wire, you're gonna to wanna to get out of the way. So at this time, if you have um, zip tie, be a good time to just you know fold this up. You don't want this hitting your graphics card or anything. Now we're gonna install our RAM modules. This is gonna be in DIMMs two and four, since so that's gonna give us dual channel. So we're gonna open the retention levers on two and four, and that's the gray memory module slots. And the fingers are actually keyed on the RAM. So the long finger goes up to the top of the motherboard and you wanna line it up in this slot like so. Don't wanna force it in or anything. It lines right into place and it'll just click into place. It doesn't really, these don't, these levers don't open on, on the, the bottom side, but it's okay, it still needs to click into place. So let it click into place. The retention lever, just like we did in DIM2. And now for DIM4, we're gonna line it up. And make sure it clicks into place on both sides, even though these levers don't open up, you still wanna make sure you hear a click or you're gonna have some issues when you try to put up the PC. Okay guys, now that we have the CPU, the Wraith Max cooler installed, as well as the RAM, let's go ahead and install the motherboard in the Bit Phoenix Shogun. It's gonna be so awesome working in this case. So let me pull up the case on the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the thumb screws off to take this beautiful tempered glass side panel. It has just enough of tin to keep that Dark Knight theme going, the Shogun theme, I should say. Seriously, if Batman had a PC, this is probably the case he has. This is coming straight from down in the Batcave, him and Morgan Freeman. Okay, really cool to know, guys, is this this side panel is actually slanted. It's, it, it has a more aesthetic touch to it. it. has a little bit of an angle. So with this Asus Prime B350 motherboard, there's actually only one, two, three, four, five, six, six mounting holes. So we're definitely gonna need to take off, take out some standoffs from this case since this um, has three less than you typically find on a ATX motherboard that has nine holes. And we don't want to you know, short our motherboard with those uh, extra standoffs. So just gonna use some pliers. Extra standoff number one is out. Extra standoff number two is out. So now we're taking the third extra standoff out. And now I'm gonna take off the back tempered glass side panel so we can access that little box that has all the screws and everything we need. And like I was saying, these thumb screws are so big, so easy to grip. Really like that. It's just so easy to remove these glass panels if you would like. And this is really cool. Like I was saying that this is fully blacked out. So it gets to really hide those cables. And back here guys, this is really cool. Here's the RGB light controller. You could put your own lighting controller in the back there if you'd like, or you can stick with theirs. And speaking of RGB lighting, up at the front of the case, guys, let me go ahead and show you how cool this is. So we have this shroud that is awesome because it covers where the PSU is gonna go, but also you can still access the PSU, the power supply, while still hiding the cables. So you get the best of both worlds, hiding it, also being able to access it. And the shroud serves a purpose, as you can see there, it says Aura Sync on the front. So it has two, two and a half inch bays for your two and a half inch solid state drives, two and a half inch drives. And that's gonna be great because, and an even better bonus to show them off is that there's a RGB lighting. Such a well thought out design, the shroud, the SSDs, and the lighting all right there. This is modular, you can take that out. Most of the features on this case are modular. There's plenty of drive cages, hard drive cages here that you can take out. We've got a fan. 120 millimeter fan included from Bit Phoenix. This is exhaust. You have two fans in the front that's gonna be pulling air in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the front off. And you can see in the front, we have 
those two 120 millimeter fans pulling in that air. And there's plenty of room up here in the top if you wanted to fit a 360 millimeter radiator, 240 millimeter radiator up here in the top, you certainly could do so. But we just went with the air cooling. And back here in the back, you have access to those drive bays. And also look, two more SSD caddies. So you have more little screws than you could ask for. I mean, tons of extra screws, that's great. And before I forget, guys, I don't forget, almost time, let's put that IO shield in. Always forget, it's crazy. You heard it click into place, just put a little bit of pressure. Oh, we've done it, it's clicked into place. Let's finally put that motherboard in. Putting that IO shield in was, was a task in and of itself. Okay, so we're gonna line it up with the six standoffs and we're gonna set it into place. Plenty of rooms to work in and that's, I haven't even taken out all these uh, drive cages that I'm not gonna be using. So I have the EVJ 750 watt gold certified G3 power supply right here in the back of the case. And the Shogun comes with six of these standard screws included. So I'm gonna secure the power supply a fair bit of distance to bring in air from the bottom of the case. I really like that. So these little caddies have little cushions where you can uh, put a screw in on the other side to really put these SSDs very securely in these front facing caddies with, with the lighting right there or a sink. So now we have our SATA data cable and we're gonna plug that in to the front of the solid state drive. And we can just route this. Actually, let's, let's route it to the back through here just to make things extra tidy. And there are six, six gigabit per second SATA connections to choose from. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the let's say the power to give power to this SSD for the system fan one, two, and three. And we're gonna go ahead and connect these to the corresponding connections on the motherboard. One of them's out of the way. I'm gonna have the cable, I'm gonna pull it a little bit back here. We don't want that cable hanging down. And I'm going to insert these to I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the CPU optional fan because we're running out of system fans here on this motherboard. And I don't have a, a Y splitter. And the front umbilicals are already here in the front of the case. So we have USB 3 right here, all those little front panel connectors, and HD audio. So up here where all the small wires are connected. Bit Phoenix case comes with a headphone connection, microphone, USB, two USB 2s, a power button, two USB 3s. This is probably the reset switch. <laughs> this is the lighting button. Okay, let's get back to the small wiring down here at the bottom of the case. This is probably the most tedious part. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the USB. Insert that now. So here for the front panel connections, the power LED positive, power LED negative, the power switch. We should have a reset switch somewhere. Okay guys, and now we're going to ready the case for the GTX 1070 graphics card. So we're gonna remove some PCI Express backplates here, a little GPU support areas. So if you were going, even with a uh, with a really high-end system, you know this would be preventing any GPU stack at all. So it comes right out like that. And now, finally, we can put the GTX 1070, and you'll hear it click into place as the retention lever closes. And here we have the six pin. It's gonna go right over here. Now, the motherboard main connector is going to go right over here. Now for the CPU, coming right up here to the top of the case. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the glass panels back on and we're gonna boot up the PC for the first time. 